I'd like to call to order the Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on Wednesday, March 2nd at 7.01 p.m. First uh, order of business, I want to uh, welcome our new member, Mr. Jim Palmer. Look forward to working with you, Thank Jim. You. Thank you. And, uh, first agenda item is... Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, do we want to do that? Mm -hmm. Do we want to do that? I was going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got my list right here. Yeah, <laughs> um, the uh, first agenda item is the public hearing for Rebecca Laramie, case number 2022-0117 Huff Road. Date of the application was February 9th. The notice of the public hearing was advertised in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette and posted at the town hall. And reads as follows. The Town of Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022 in the Douglas Municipal Center Resource Room, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., to hear the following ap application. Public hearing. The Zoning Board will be hearing the application of Rebecca Laramie upon a remand from the Massachusetts Land Court in the matter of Laramie versus Heaney and the, Z and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number 21, um, MISC 000084. Rebecca Laramie is seeking a special permit pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 9, and the Douglas Zoning Bylaws, Section 3.4.3, .3, non-conforming structures to replace a metal roof and cabana depicted on a certified plot plan dated August 5th, 2016, with a roofed pavilion as depicted on a certified plot plan dated January 31st, 2022, both being submitted with the application. The prior existing structure had a side yard setback of 2.5 to 3.2 feet, while the proposed roof pavilion has a side yard setback ranging from 8.2 to 9.8. The property is located in a rural agricultural RA zone district at 17 Huff Road, Assessor's Map 111, Parcel 41. The purpose of this hearing is to provide an opportunity for public comment. A copy of the application may be viewed in the Community Development Department during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed application should appear at the time and place designated. Um, uh, the, the members hearing this this um, case tonight will be Mr. Fitzpatrick, Mr. Forget, Mr. Palmer, myself, and Mr. Bambara, who's joining us through Zoom. The public hearing is now open. The applicant or your representative. Good evening. Yeah, welcome to join us, Thanks. Chris. Don Caveney from the law firm of Christopher Hayes, Wojcik and Mavrikos in Worcester, and thanks for um, letting us come back and, and on this remand. Mm -hmm. um, we submitted a package, included some affidavits, but I, I think it's important to kind of touch on some um, acts that occurred back back in 2020, which shouldn't have. And um, there's certainly a recognition that Ms. Laramie and, and the Laramies um, should not have taken down the, the prior structure and, and started the new structure without going to get a building permit. There's, you know, that was a mistake by them and, and they own it. And um, so to the extent that that caused um, waste of your limited resources here um, and having to come back a second time, we apologize for that. Um, but we are here now on a remand, and I wanted to also address a couple of, I, I went back and watched that January 2021 hearing, and it seemed like I was a little bit confused, and I don't know if there was, it seemed like there was some confusion from the board, um, because there was, it has always been since the 1950s, 1960s, that's been established in those affidavits we submitted, that there was a, a cabana structure that was there, and that had footings. Well, what the Laramies had done every season was to add a carport to that. And so there were two, even though that they, they connected the carport to the, um, to the original cabana structure, 
I never viewed that uh, carport. That's not a permanent structure that was removed in seasonally, but the, the, the original cabana structure was never removed since it was built in, again, the, in the 1960s and, and certainly before zoning. Um, and I think there was, again, some confusion on, on those two plot plans from 2016 and 2020 um, that showed different um, measurements. And, and I, I think there was some confusion as to location. Uh, the location's never changed, and I think it's accurately portrayed in, in the assessor's map. That's where that original cabana uh, always was. Um, that size of that cabana was around 10 feet to by 12 feet. Um, that was taken down, replaced by what is there today. Uh, we are here today um, seeking uh, a special permit pursuant to 3.43, I believe, of the, of the Douglas bylaw for a special permit for, um, for relief to reconstruct that pre-existing pre non-conforming gazebo into the, uh, what, is, what is there today. We do propose that it, right now it's up against, you know, um, I think that August 2020 plot plan accurately reflects where the distance is between um, those posts and uh, the lot line, and we're proposing to move it over five feet, and that's where those new uh, figures show up in the January 31, 2022 plot plan. So um, we're here for, again, a special permit to, to um, in essence, construct the gazebo in the location that's set forth in that January 31, 2022 plan. And if there's any questions, um, I'm certainly here to try to answer them. And Ms. Laramie's here, um, and we have some neighbors here as well. But we also, again, did submit 12 or 13 affidavits from the abutters, uh, and most importantly, from the immediate abutters. Mr. Wilson is at, I believe, 20, He's to the right, if you're looking at the house, Mr. Wilson's to the right, the Snows are to the left, and Mr. Hathaway is across the street. And they are the three most effective abutters uh, to what is being proposed. And um, they've all um, testified through their affidavits that they support the application and that the proposed gazebo um, is not you know, substantially detrimental to, to the, uh, more su substantially detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing, than the prior existing structure. Um, so that being said, I, I'm here to answer any questions I can. Okay. Um, I just want to mention that the, um, all the abutters were notified by certified mail and we do have the cards uh, returned. And we did have a communication from the planning board, which um, I'm a little bit confused by, but they, they said that they had no objection to the attached application if it was extended to the rear. And it said that they do have an objection to the attached request because they need more information to, to give us their opinion. So that, that came from the, from the uh, planning board. If it was extended to the rear? To the rear. A book. To, so, do we, okay, you don't know, okay, don't that's know. the confusion, okay, sure. I don't know, yeah. We're, we're all in agreement that we're confused. Okay, yeah, all right. Exactly, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> there any, anybody that has any questions for the applicant, any board members? Okay, I, I uh, just wanted to clarify something. Um, uh, building Commissioner, Mr. Frazier and I met, um, I believe, an engineer, the applicant's engineer on Mr. site. Yeah. Yes. And um, I know you mentioned that the distance from the pole to the lot line, but um, Mr. Frazier and I measured and there was a, was a 13 inch overhang. And, and the distance has got to be from the closest point of the structure to the lot line. Okay. So on the application, I think it said 2.3, but we determined it was like, uh, no, 3.3, and anyway, it was 13 inches different, the, I guess. The, the application said that it was 3.2 feet, and when we did the measurements, it came out to somewhere around 2.3 feet. Off yeah, of the yeah, 23 inches, I think it was, right. if I remember right. So. Okay, so off of the August 2016, right, here it's showing 3.2, and. Three, two, and two, five, and you're, you're in essence showing 
another 13 inches right. closer to, to the... That was shown to the post that wasn't shown to the overhead. Okay. Right, so... Uh-huh. You should. If you don't, I certainly have extras I can circulate now. 2016? No. No. Sure, if you do have copies, we'd gladly we'd like to review it. I've got copies. just on this August 2016 plot plan. This was done um, not, not for any submission to any governmental entity or for the bank. I mean, this is co coincides with when the Laramies bought the property from the estate of Mr. Laramie's um, parents', parents estate. Mm -hmm. So they, they had prepared this plot plan for their own internal purposes. It, it wasn't anything that was constructed. This I know it was referred to as an as-built plan, I think, in the January 2021 hearing. It really it's really is not an as-built plan. It was it was done to, to really just for them to get some sort of comfort as to where the where the lines were and, and where these different structures were as it relates to the boundary lines. Okay. This uh, this picture that you submitted um, shows the cabana, I guess that's um, that's what I'm calling it. Yeah. Yeah. So that so this between 13 and 16, this grew. I no, guess. and that's what that's what I'm talking about. Is if if you look at the 2016. The, the, what I just submitted, the plot plan, it, it, what is reflected on the plot plan is that temporary carport that was just brought in and brought out seasonally. The, the, that what is showing in the photograph, that was, that's been there since the 1950s, 1960s. Mm -hmm. All that this was showing, he just was reflecting the fact when he went, went there, there was a carport that was temporary for sure, attached to it to just extend it out. But it was taken down every winter. Mm -hmm. So that's... Okay. Does that make sense? So this is the permanent, if That's you will. That's the per exactly. That and this, this reflects the additions, the temporary additions. This seasonal. reflects that cabana plus that temporary structure that was added on every season. Okay. And it, again, this was done in August of 2016, so it was during the summer season. That's why that temporary structure is reflected in this. If he had gone out there in December, it wouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Bernie, anybody have any questions for the applicant? I will. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Are you with us, John? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Did Mike just make a motion? No. Okay, all right. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yes. can I, I'd like to ask a question with regards to the plans that are shown, both the 2016 and this 2021, 20, is this? The cabana, the one that was in, yep. Is there is there something in that backyard that's restricting that from coming further into the backyard than what's there? Well, there is an intermittent stream that runs on the right-hand side of the property, and the septic runs out of the backyard. Uh, backyard. It, it runs to the right of the deck, so I think there's that issue of um, that. That is really kind of preventing any further movement. You're talking about into the middle of, of the yard. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have anything showing that there's any any reason why that structure couldn't move over on this drawing. Yeah. I see well, no reason on it. I'm looking at a drawing yeah. that's showing me a structure, and it, I, I believe I had spoken with you earlier with yeah. regards to that. Yeah. You know, that if you know you should be showing where that septic leaching field is, if that's a, a, a contention, or where the intermittent stream would be, but I don't see any of that yeah. on there. So, so just wondering where, where it is in the location, mm -hmm. so what you're proposing. Sure. Yeah, I can. Um, we were able to get something this week. I probably should have submitted it. Um, but I can show it to you now. Um, and I did go, after we spoke, I did go to the Board of Health and there are no plans for the, the septic system 
um, you got at 17 Huff Road. There's just nothing there. I went through I went through the whole Huff Road neighborhood with the um, with the with the um, administrator there, and I think there was one piece of paper there. Um, so what Ms. Laramie did is she hired the the um, the company that does the septic cleaning, and they were able to approximate where the well they know where the the septic tank is. Um, they were able to approximate where the leach pit is. Um, and the intermittent stream is shown there as well. There's an extra one. Thank you. They dug it up. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm ready. All set, Mike? Yeah. Clarity, I need to ask Brian for a uh, question for clarity and then. Yep, go ahead. Are we only discussing from today forward, or are we discussing what was heard on the first case where this is a, is this a continuance in essence? So it's a continuance of the original here. Mm -hmm. So it went out to the land for back here. So it's one continuous hearing, same docket number. The relief that they're requesting is different though. So no, I understand that, but that's the, the discussion that we had on, on the first time around, we can still discuss those it's today. Fair game. Okay. So the first time around, uh, because there, there was a little confusion, um, I had gone to the assessors uh, on the assessors site, and I printed out this one. I printed out another one because it wasn't clear in my packet, showing where that gazebo is, which is what your 2016 shows. The little square. Yep. Your actually your septic plan shows the same little square. Yep. Um, and then I also went on to Google Earth and I and I looked at street view because I was just curious why we had inconsistency. In 2013 on Google Earth, it didn't show anything there except for the little fan of your house. So your cop walk wasn't on there or, or none of that stuff. Um, okay. But we're not, I'm not here on the carport. I'm not using the carport as any. It, so it may have, whenever that picture was taken, the carport may have been down. But I, I'm not here. We're not using the carport as any sort of basis for the. No, 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 okay. You okay. So your original cabana roof in the back, right? So now you just said that the carport doesn't exist, right? Because you're not using it. So it's not taken into consideration, correct? Correct. Okay. So you're replacing the cabana. Putting up a new roof, right? Replacing the cabana, and there was a um, uh, Ms. Laramie refers to it as a chicken spit, but it's a, it's a, it was a uh, uh, a fire pit. Um, chicken spit. Chicken spit. Thank you. Uh, with footings, so that and that was I think that and there was a shed there as well. Uh, so there are really three structures there, but um, so but we're not, yes, correct. We're not using the. The carport. Okay, so now that we're back to that, the carport doesn't connect to the chicken spit, barbecue pit, whatever you want to call it, yeah. or the shed. Okay. Yeah. So you're replacing the the cabana, and you're just pushing it off to the side. So the the point I'm trying to make is that 3.2 or 2.8, whatever it is, for the setback for the shed or the chicken spit or whatever it is, really isn't a consideration if we're talking about replacing the cabana. You just eliminated those things. Those don't grandfather you in as far as a setback from the property line. If you're not expanding the shed, you're not replacing the shed, you're not expanding the chicken spit or expanding that. You're, you're doing the cabana. Well, I, I respectfully disagree. I, I, I agree we're not using the temporary carport, but the chicken spit, we can, re your bylaw permits us to change to use a structure, and, and even if we're changing the use of that structure, to use that as part of, because if it's a pre-existing non-conforming structure, we can use that as part of our application process, as 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 replacing, altering, changing the use of that structure. So, okay. The, so, so using that uh, in our definitions, a structure provides shelter. Chicken spit provides shelter. You're, you're trying to split his with yeah. so. I, I'm not trying to, I'm really oh, not. I'm just, you, you're yeah. saying that it's a structure, and I don't understand how that could be a structure. But in, in any event, the to the question that the building commissioner asked, I mean, you said that the septic system was uh, 
an obstruction, so you couldn't actually come back further toward the middle of the yard. And you also brought up the intermitting stream that's looking at the front of the house. It's on the right-hand side. When this came through the first time, there was extensive emails going back and forth between myself and the conservation agent, and they had no issue at all with it. So, okay. So it must not be an issue because he wasn't concerned about it at that time. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. As far as the septic system, um, the building commission correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to be a minimum of 10 feet away from the tank. And the <laughs> leach field or leach pit or whatever it is, if it doesn't have a basement, you can you have to be a minimum of 10 feet away from that. So judging by this picture, it doesn't prevent you, if it's the scale, it doesn't prevent you to move that over to the side. To the center? To the center. Move it further in. To, the, yeah. to, to put it back near where it was. Well, it certainly is. is uh, it, there's no doubt. It's it's not where it was. It's it's further to the to the snow side of the property, um, but it certainly overlaps, and not by a great deal, but it certainly overlaps um, the prior structure. And all I'm doing is answering the the reasons why you said that we couldn't move it over. You, know, you were answering the uh, building commissioner's question. I just wanted clarity as to what the actual law is on that, or the or the the code, on that, I guess. Oh. And I'm not familiar with the conversations you had with Board of Health or. And I didn't what, have any conversations oh, I'm sorry, what, with Board of Health. What, I, I'm answering the question that you had asked the building uh, inspector. Uh, the building inspector had asked you about moving it over, and you sure. said that the septic system was in would prevent that. And actually, it doesn't prevent. Well, I didn't say it was, it was one of the considerations we had of not going, getting closer to it. I didn't say it would prevent it. I, yeah. would, would, a reason why we didn't want to go further yeah. toward that area. Is there any particular reason why you want to try to get closer to where it was originally? It just brings you more in compliance. So um, we look at topography, we look mm -hmm. at the shape of the lot, we look at um, any other hardships that that may be caused, and I don't I don't see where there's a a lot of obstructions for you to bring it back to close well, to where it was. And that's when you are analyzing a variance. We're not here asking for a variance. What we're here is to replace a pre-existing non-conforming structure. And if we establish it's pre-existing non-conforming, um, and we establish that it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, I think we're entitled to a special permit. So the, the, the questions of topography and, all, and the soil and all that, okay. um, is that's a variance analysis. And we're not here seeking a variance. No, I'm mistaken. That's, that's OK. No. And, and with respect to the structure, the definition says a combination of materials assembled at a fixed location to give support or shelter, such as a building framework, retaining wall, tent, reviewing stand, platform, bin, fence, sign. So a structure does not have to provide shelter. And that's the definition I'm right from your, your, your zoning bylaws. And I, again, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be difficult. I I truly appreciate this has n did not start off the right way. Mistakes were made. They've owned the mistakes. And I've watched a year of these hearings, and and there's been very little hesitation to grant variances, which have a much higher degree of of uh, response or, or of a higher burden by an applicant. And what we're seeking to do is, you know. Could, could we move it over a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we have proposed to move it over the, the five feet. We are now um, six to eight feet, six to nine feet, seven to 10 feet away from the snow line. Um, the snows don't object. The snows are in favor of it. Um, the neighborhood supports it. I don't know if you've all been down to that neighborhood, but that is one of the, I, I went down there and you take that right in and you got a tree and all the family signs and people who, drive down there, live there, or go visit people who live there. And everyone there in that neighborhood, and that is, should be, the, I think, the focus, is supportive of this. And again, I, I cannot undo what was done in 2020. And, no, I'm not, and I'm, but I, I, I know that, but, I, but, I, but I, I'm not saying this rhetorically. I'm not trying to be cute. I get it. I, I, I've had some long conversations with my client about mistakes that were made, um, and I, we're all human, and I, they messed up, but I also appreciate the, 
this board and this town not being happy with someone taking a cavalier approach to uh, their property. I get it. And, and again, so I can't undo it. I, I, I think what we've put forth to you does permit you um, in, to, to grant us a special permit in the, in, the, in, the propo in the area that we're proposing to put it. And it's, it'd be a significant cost to them to, remove, to, to move it from where it is right now over five feet. And uh, again, with the snows being the most affected and being supportive of it, I, I think we've met our burden to, to obtain a, a you, special permit. You have to recall this all came to light because someone in the neighborhood complained. So there is someone that's unhappy. Someone mu must must have been unhappy to, to write, whether they're unhappy today mm -hmm. or unhappy last month. Uh, all I can tell you is, I've given you 12 or 13 affidavits, including the people most affected, and everyone is in support of it. There's no one here as I know, as, I, as far as I can tell, mm -hmm. who opposes the project. So if the person who complained is still upset, um, they're not here objecting to it. Um, and so uh, any, anyone who has been contacted, anyone who read the notice, who is either here or has submitted an affidavit, supports it. And I, again, I respectfully request that this is a gazebo. We're not looking to build a new house. We're not, and, and it is a small little lot and if you look at what's proposed and what's there now, it fits in to the neighborhood. I, I, that's why I attached the assessor's map. There are non-conformities all through this neighborhood. Sure there, there, are. There, there are, I mean, I think their garage sits part into a Huff Road. Mm -hmm. Every every property on that, on no, that street. But that got doesn't mean we need to make it worse. It is very congested, agreed. But that doesn't mean that we need to make it worse than it is. And if someone wants to build what you're proposing, whatever, six feet from the lot line, what's to stop everybody that's supporting this from coming back and wanting to build something within six feet of the lot line? I hear you. I, I, then what, then what yeah. do we have? Yeah. And we have a city. With, with, with structures 12 feet apart. Yeah. Hypothetically, I'm just saying, no, if, I, if you do it for one, it's pretty what, hard to look other people in the eye and say no if they're proposing something similar. I mean, I'd like to see it move further from the lot line myself. I, I, don't, I don't see why it can't be moved more towards the center, get some space between the lot line and the, and the property, more space than you're proposing. What, I mean, is, is there a counter proposal, I guess? Well, I've been here 16 years and most people um, get favorable results if they're if they're building more than more than fifty percent of the required setback. And I, I'm sorry, is it twenty five on the side? Twenty five, correct. You know. This is Jenny. May I speak? Sure. Go ahead, John. Uh, in regards to this whole scenario, that we've got going on for the last year and a half. Uh, I agree with you, Chairman, and uh, we just went through one just last year. We had a home that we put an addition on, a two-car garage with a storage unit, and he wanted six feet off his property line, and he had a couple of acres. And the fact that his neighbors a little bit further away still impacted them in such a way. And that could come back to us after, after we, if we decided to, uh, go with this the 9.8 and the 8.2 um, I'm going to have to go for the 12 feet myself honestly um, I don't feel it would be fair to someone that's like I said just said it was just last year maybe just a little, little, little early than that is that to ask for a two car garage with storage on top and storage on the side and you want a six feet and we came back and we said, no, you're going to have to readjust this. And he went to 12, and most of the board members, I think I think it was a unanimous agreement. It was like, we met him halfway. And that is the way I feel right now with this situation, too. So um, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, John.
I got a question for you. Go ahead, Ron. On John's comment, was that on, is he talking about a two acre lot? He is. It was a property on uh, Webster Road. Okay, yeah, we just did that. Yeah, yeah recently. And the guy wanted. Well, that, that has, as far as I'm concerned, that has nothing to do with what's going on here. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been down there, I've looked at it. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to uh, go through. Well, I, let me back up. The explanation that was done tonight, I think, satisfies me in what they're trying to do here. I mean, this is this is more this is nothing but a little shelter, right? That's all it is. Yeah. And it was there before. Was it was it there before? Let me. Review. Well, I guess part of it was there permanently, and part of it was there seasonally, yeah. from what the attorney said. But um, I think every well, some some somebody has got some uh, statements, but I'll tell you, I'm fine with this plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. In that in that situation, you have to take, as far as I'm concerned, you have to take a look. At what's down there, they're all the same. That's that's not that's not this gentleman's mistake or our mistake. That's the way it was presented. It's just like cottage calling. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, like I say, I don't I don't have a problem. But, so, I, okay. thank you. All right, Mr. Chair. So Go ahead, Mike. All I'm in between him and John. <laughs> uh, and, and I stated this to Miss Laramie at, at the beginning that um, the overall structure that it was stated at, at the first time around was 33 feet and you built a new structure that was 20 feet so you reduced it by six and, uh, 13 feet and you were 4.5 feet from the property line with that structure if I remember correctly and I had said to you if you had split that 13 feet in half and added it to the four and a half, probably wouldn't even be talking about it. It, probably, it would have been um, fair and consistent with what we typically do on these uh, compromised lots. It's unfortunate that you're in a 90,000 square foot zone and you only have a 15,000 square foot lot. I get all that. Um, I, I myself would be comfortable which is pretty close to what she wants now anyway. So you know, talking a couple feet off of the, the uh, short distance was 8, what, 8.2 feet? 8.2 and 9.8. So That's just my own mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Need a motion? No, nope. 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 we're just in nope. discussion. Yeah. yeah, we're just in discussion. So it's just, just open thinking, and I think it's helpful for everybody to, to go through that process and um, come to a conclusion. Positive or negative, come to a conclusion. I'm not. I'm still not comfortable with the proposal to be eight feet from the lot line. Um, I I'd like to see it be consistent with other other decisions we've made, and and you know what? I agree that. With Ron, it, it, you know, there's a lot of homes down there that are close together and so forth, but um, that doesn't mean we have to make it worse. No, and I, I hear you, but it, it, and I and I just I, I you brought up two two things. One is the 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 the, um, the the recent application that they wanted six feet and they went to twelve, but that project was seem that seems to be comparing an apple to an orange it, it's it's not even a fruit to a, it's a fruit to a vegetable it, it that was a large project they want to put a garage within six feet this is not a garage it's an open mm -hmm. area three posts a, a, a roof and and three posts so so I, and you say worse nobody who lives there has said this new gazebo makes the neighborhood worse. They say the exact opposite. They say it makes it better. It's an asset. Maybe they're planning to put up a gazebo six feet from the lot line as well. So if, if they encourage 
the neighbor's application, they'll be back for the same thing. Then everybody's going to be six feet from the lot line. It, it's just very pessimistic. Well, <laughs> uh, perspective you know, just on just being, you know, just being realistic. That's what happens. People come and support things. We we encounter that often. People come in and say, "Well, you you did this for Mr. and Mrs. Jones. You did this for Mr. and Mrs. Smith." But I don't know. I, I mean, they had to know when they bought the property that there were limitations. Sure. Okay. But you also have pre you also have a lot that's a it's a pre existing non conforming lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, you have limitations. But there are limitations. But you, sure. But you get the benefit of Chapter Forty Eight, Section Six, with being a pre existing non conforming structure or structures. So, but no doubt, everyone buys. You, you buy it subject to zoning, mm -hmm. but that can cut both ways. Many times, the non conforming lots are you're better off with a non conforming lot than you are with a conforming lot mm -hmm. if you want to do something with the with, with the uh, with the property. Um, Can I say something else? Yeah, sure, go ahead, Ron. To, to uh, follow up on your comment, um, that other other people down there might uh, complain about it, or chances are they're probably going to want to do the same thing. But yeah, right, right. All of those lots are that small. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as being detrimental to the neighborhood, it isn't detrimental to the neighborhood. I don't think so, because you, you've been down there, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been down there, you've been down there? Yep. Jim may not have. John has. The, the, uh, uh, it, is, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't want people thinking that they, they can just put anything where, where, where they want to put it, but right. the, the next door neighbor might come back would a plan like this to do it, to do something like this? Mm -hmm. So, it's it's the nature of the of the thing down there. The lots are small. Uh, it it doesn't impact. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't impact the neighborhood. He's not in the roadway. But the previous structure it looks like there was an attempt. Huh? It was an attempt in the previous structure to keep it as far away from the lot lines as as they could. I mean. This is without the seasonal whatever addition or whatever. Right, right. And I, believe it or not, I think the history to that is that that structure was built first, and that it was there to provide them shelter while they built the house. I, I believe. Yeah, if um, sure. so, I'm, I'm just. I think yeah. that's. Well, let me ask you this. Um, could we uh, continue this so we could reach out to Board of Health to ensure? that if we go over to pick up on your trying to find uh, some common ground, splitting the difference between Mr. Brambara and, and um, Mr. Forge here. Um, if we got assurances from, from Board of Health that, and I don't know because I haven't, I'm, go, I'm going out of school here and I'll probably get reprimanded for even talking about this, but, um, Continue it to allow us an opportunity to reach out to CONCOM, or not CONCOM, Board of Health, just to ensure that if we come over two feet more than we've already proposing, um, then it wouldn't be an issue with Board of Health. I mean, the structure is going to have to be rebuilt, correct? Unfortunately. Dismantle. So you can make it two feet shorter. If you're going to dismantle it and rebuild it, you can make it two feet smaller. That would solve it. They should be able to slide it over. I don't. I. Well, I'm not. That. That's above my pay grade. I. I don't think they can do that. But may, if they can, that'd be great. I. I don't. I don't know. Um. Mr. Chairman, just, just for just to help you a little bit. <clears throat> so on the uh, assessor's GIS site, top right hand corner, there's a measurement tool that you can use, and I did that. This is approximately 24, this existing one that's on the assessor's map is about 24 feet from the property line, from the edge of the property line to the edge of that cabin, okay, on the side that we're talking about. You said it was 10 or 12 feet wide. The new structure is 20 feet wide. So if you take that 10 foot and use the smaller dimension and you go um, add 10 feet to the side of it, make it 20 feet, that would put you 12 feet off the property line. Uh, no, 20, no, 14 feet off the property line, actually. Um, and if this structure was here when the septic system got put in, 
then you shouldn't have an issue with that. But can I just make a comment on that? Go ahead. Um, so the new structure requires a much deeper, like, hole. The old structure was built so long ago that that tube was kind of, you know, probably only this when we pulled it up, maybe 24 inches. But the engineer said the other one has to be wider, the breadth of it. So it's not. Yeah, no, I get all that. Yeah, so yeah. Let, let me help you with that real quick. The, I'm just, that's yeah, let me help you with that real quick. On the bottom of your post, you have a big foot. It's in, it's in one of your drawings here. It shows mm -hmm. that it's got a flared out bottom yeah, yeah. to it. The Title V laws on this, if you, if you have a slab on grade, you can be a slab on grade if the concrete is poured on the ground and there's nothing below the surface, so the affluence from the septic system can't go into the basement. Correct. You can be as close as 10 feet. That's the minimum distance. The septic tank, regardless whether you have a foundation or not, you can be within 10 feet of that as well. So it doesn't matter the size of the footings or anything. I think that you would, judging by the septic plan that you that you provided, you're not going to have a, you're not going to have a problem with that because it shows way away from what the structure is. So actually, you're coming. What I had, what Dan said. You're coming, that original location would move to the left two feet. What I had said, it would move to the left four feet. And what you're proposing, it would move almost six feet. So if it's moving away from that septic system, I, I find it hard to believe that it wouldn't be in compliance. And the building commissioner is sitting there, he can. So if I may. Go ahead. <coughs> I just want to back up just a little bit with regards to structures. Whether it's a garage, a shed, a gazebo, a doghouse, if it's on a foundation, it's a permanent structure. Okay, the seasonal one that you're putting up at Dagenham, that's not a structure. Okay, right. so when uh, Dan was talking about you know a garage and you're saying that's not apples and you're comparing apples and oranges, you're not. It's a structure. It's a permanent structure on a foundation. Okay. Regardless of what it is, it's a permanent structure. It's not a portable. It's not a a, 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 a tool shed or anything else that's not on. All right. So the, in building guidelines, a structure has a permanent foundation on it. That has a permanent foundation on. It. Moving forward to the footings, whether they're, I believe those footings are uh, 12 inch footings with a 24 inch big foot. That does not make a difference whether it's six feet deep or two feet deep with regards to the septic system. Location to the septic system makes a difference. So whether they had 10 inch sauna tubes only down two feet, it doesn't matter. They still were in that geographical location. So that doesn't make any difference with regards to that. I'm looking at the design that was sent out. It's not a leaching field, it's a leaching pit. Right. So you're not dispersing a whole area, or if there is a whole area that's dispersal, it should be showed on that drawing to know that, okay, I can't go over here because I'm encroaching on the leaching field, or I'm encroaching on the tank or the D box or the piping. That's not shown there. It's showing a leaching pit. We're surmising as to what the size of the leaching pit is. Whether the Board of Health would be able to help you with that, I don't know. You had said earlier that they didn't have any records of this and you found this by your uh, the guy who comes and pumps your system. He drew it for us. He right. dug it up. Um, but it was from your septic pumping guy. It wasn't from the Board of Health. Correct. Right, right. right. We were doing it So I'm just saying, I don't know that the Board of Health can give you any identifiable, identifiable things to go by if they don't have the drawings to go by. You're relying on knowledge from whenever it was put in the 50s to 70s. I don't know if it's a new one, existing one. Yeah, okay. Cool. So you would, in my professional opinion, it's being a building inspector you would have to get a survey done on that by a licensed optologist that would give you an actual what it is before you could utilize saying, I'm working two feet of it or I'm encroaching on it too far. We don't know. It's unexplainable then. It's a, it's a, it's a 
a close guesstimation at best because nobody has actually viewed the system. They haven't scoped the pipes. Yeah, they, they have, did. Did they scope the pipe? Yeah, that's, so that's, what, that's the gentleman that drew so it. So what he size bank it. is it? He cut it. Uh, did it say on that? So leaching fit. He, leaching he brought gallon. his camera out. He thousand shows an unknown size and depth. Of unknown the pit. Okay. So of this the is pit. this is what you're encroaching on more, and pit. that's more of an issue to encroach on. A tank, you can, they can oh, find I a tank very that. easily. I can't see that. Well, I'm, I'm going by the drawing. This right here, this right yeah, here. but what are we encroaching on? All right. So Which one? with moving your structure, what you're talking about? Yeah. Where, 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 you had your existing structure here. Yep. Right. So we're talking about moving the structure over this way. You're talking that you're going to be encroaching on something here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, as Mr. Fitzpatrick said, this side of the existing gazebo, gazebo that was there, yeah. has already encroached to that point where you said there was a smaller footing and all that. Correct. So that line could conceivably be the start of your new gazebo. There's no reason it couldn't be it, if that's what you're saying that you had clear space to do that. But it, it wasn't that far out. Before. I'm going by your drawing. No, no, it, that's what's there now. That's yeah, that's what's there now. That that that's just keep because you were back yes, your sir. house is yes, there sir. now. Yes, This this is good. You were there, I think. It's not back your house. This oh, this is the, this, this is where, this look, is where look, 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 this is not to scale. This is just for septic. He's not. Well, yeah, but that's. This is I just mean, the septic. That's this real. This here is very close to compliant to this drawing showing the existing. Yeah, I okay. just I just don't know how right. close this truly is because this isn't, it says nor right here do, not to nor scale. Nor do we to know right. that if this is a line that can be used to go from this line. But this is this the way, old one. I understand and that. And th this, this one is out here more. See how this is out further where right. the line changes? Regardless of that, we okay. don't know what this is. This we don't know what this leaching is, field is. Right, but what I'm saying is this old cabana, mm -hmm. and it had little footings, and it you know it could it could stay next to this. Mm -hmm. Okay, the new cabana is further out, <coughs> so closer to the pit. So if I'm I saying, were to move it over, what I'm saying to you okay. is we have no measurements. We have this measurement, but there is no measurements. We have no measurements. This is the same as here, away from the house, but it's just for, it's, it's, this little cabana was bigger now. Right, this was uh, 12 feet or whatever it is, and now you're up to 24 feet. Yes, sir. So you're saying you've gone 14 feet this way. Correct. So you don't even know if that's encroached on that to begin with. Well, you can see it in the grass. I mean, you no, know you how far out it is. You started off by saying it wasn't a scale. So right. right. This right. isn't a scale, no, this right. one. This is but so but we, we know for sure it's past the, at the that. End, at the yeah. end of the day, I guess what I'm saying yep. is to justify your, your notion of, of location with regards to the septic system, mm -hmm. there is no indication of an exact septic system in the back of this property to say, mm -hmm. yes, we're too close, or, or no, we're not too No, close. totally yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. I don't, I just brought this because you guys wanted to, well, you right. said it would be good to know, so they threw, threw a camera down, they told me how long it was, right. they told me how big the box was, and they couldn't quite get all the way around, so they said this was an estimate on the on the leaching pit because mm -hmm. they it, the ground was frozen they literally used a saw to cut just just recently so um, so we don't know exactly the full dimension of this right. one correct but there's no measurements there's, there's no a measurement. measurements right here they're right here it tells you exactly what it is it's just not to scale the drawings not to scale but the measurements are there I'm not gonna pretend I understand how to read it but right he just didn't draw it to scale I asked the Sorry? A and C is 14. Mr. Chairman, if I could. Yeah, go ahead, uh, John. So, uh, you know, looking down at the plan, what they want to do, which is a nine foot, eight inches, and if you eight foot two. But they are 16, I'm sorry, yeah, 16 foot eight inches away from, uh, 16 feet eight inches away from the house. Now, if they pull them maybe four or five feet close to the house and slid it just the other way and they'll still have, they'll, they'll, they'll read that 12 feet we're asking. What we are asking for? But I'm asking. Okay. I have a very difficult time. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, giving, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
difficult to make decisions on semi-accurate information. No, I, no, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and you know, again, I, because we were here before zoning, I, I wasn't focused too much on the septic. You had just brought that up, and it was a more, I thought, I interpreted it as more of a, a building application question, not a zoning um, Board of Appeals question. It so. would all fall into the same thing, because if, hypothetically, this gets approved in, in the location that the old one was, Yeah. OK? All of a sudden, you're pulling a building permit. I say to you, I need the location of that septic system in its entirety yep. to know that you're far enough away from the septic system. Well, in reality, that, that's, that's a knowledge that needs to be known to be applying for something saying why you can't have it there as a potential reason. Mm. Also, yes, if you're getting that close, if, as you're saying, I need an accurate drawing showing me everything that's there for a building permit. Right. Okay. So it's, uh, I know I spoke with you briefly about a, a septic plan uh, when you brought the paperwork in, and this is the reason why I was saying. No, I understood, and, and that's why I went next door right after speaking with you to try to find the right. septic plan on file at the town. And we had it, talked, and it, I said, I don't know if you'll find it. And, I don't know and you were it. right. It doesn't right. exist. So, right. I mean, I don't know if you've dealt with that situation before. I mean, I know. Where I live, we had an in-law unit put on for my mother-in-law, and likewise, we could not find where our septic system was, and we were able to, again, approximate. I don't think we're ever going to be able to. I guess, have you ever come across that I've, type? I have come across where septic systems were of the 1950s vintage, paperwork had disappeared, and yes, what they ended up having to do was get an actual survey done whether it means digging test holes around the leaching field to find the stone product, uh, digging down to find pipes elevation and height. Right. Uh, you know, it's just all about testing. There is a lot that can be done by uh, electronic wanding to find locations of things. Uh, I, you know, in 1950s, that could very well be a cast iron pipe going from the house to the tank, the tank to the leaching field. I can't answer to all of it. I mean, yeah. but I have run into it before. And when you're trying to put a permanent structure any place near a septic or a leaching field, it's one of those criteria that needs to be met with its, uh, you know, yep. honesty as to where it is. You don't want to start digging down and digging into the middle of a, a tank that you didn't even know it was there. Sure. Um. Could I take one minute to speak? Because I, what I'm thinking about is, is whether the board would be amenable to continuing until the next hearing so we can reassess, hear what you had to say, hear Mr. Fitzpatrick had to say, Mr. Brambara, everybody, and if we can come up with something that um, would get us four votes. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I again, I, I, I want this to be over with. I think everyone yeah. wants it to no. be over with and want it to be done fairly, equitably, um, and I'm... Go ahead. Right. But if you agree to move it over and then you end up being in the middle of a septic system, then it just, now you have two problems. So... Uh, well, that would give us the time to, to mm -hmm. hopefully figure out. No, I out. agree. It would. I agree. You know what, before you do that, um, I just want to open it up. Is there anybody in the room that wants to speak on this application? I don't know enough about the nuts and bolts with it. Okay, but we just need uh, your name and address. Yeah. Paul Halfway, 18 Huff Road. Okay. I, um, I've been there for 24 years, and I live in the property across the street. And um, the Land Army's do a great job taking care of the property. Every morning I look out at that gazebo when I pull my truck out, and um, I don't even really notice much of a difference between the old one and the new one. I guess it's moved a little bit. It's a few feet over. but. I don't object to what they're doing. That's just what I want to let you guys know. It. That's all. Okay. Okay. Idea. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Dawn Wilson. I'm at 11 Huff Road. I'm on the opposite side of the Laramies. Okay. And um, the structure seems to have replaced what was already there. They, you know, and it, in my opinion, it's much nicer. It looks better. We have a better view of the lake. Um, I don't see it as a detriment to the area. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else?
Okay. Do you want to speak to your client? Or? I would, if you can give me. Yeah, we'll uh, take a few minutes. Two, we have two or three minutes. Well, we're doing that. Why don't we? Uh, I have just one voucher to sign. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you. Uh, Mike, there's a voucher right there. When you submit incomplete information, it's... Thank you. If they agree to move it over, like that appears the majority of the board's looking for, if they agree to do that, then they want to move it over and they're, they're digging up the septic system. Yep, so you can Every meeting, uh, if there are bills that the board mm -hmm. incurred or an applicant for the board incurred, we just have to review the bill and sign it. That's all. Okay. So it can be paid. Yep. And that was for a, a condominium project in town that's um, on North Street, and the town uh, had a consulting engineer that went up there and did some work, and it's the it's the applicants responsibility to pay the bill and they they actually fund a um, an account yep. and then the money's drawn from that from account. that account yeah so yeah so asphalt testing and, yeah Bring his boxer. To, does he bring his boxer to work? Never. Never. No. Nobody brings their animals anymore. Oh. Did you meet Kate Federoff? Another partner in our office. No. Um. So she's got a great thing. Thinks the size of a horse. <laughs> she used to bring it in, but it thinks it's a puppy, so it tries to get up on your lap and pedal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it knocks you right out of your chair. <laughs> it's awesome. So between the two of them, man, we used to have dogs in the place all the time. Yeah. Not anymore. Yep. Everybody's home now. Right. No reason to bring a dog to the office. Right. Yeah. It'll change soon. Oh. It's turning now. I know we're it's starting to turn, yeah. We had a, a mouse in the office. Jay set out a trap last night. Got back first thing in the morning to take the trap. Jay, there a mouse? And I said, no, not only is there no mouse, but there's no trap. <laughs> Are you sure it was a mouse? It dragged it off. <laughs> well, so I'm on the phone about half an hour later, and I hear it. I go out around the corner, and there's this horribly upset mouse dragging his trap all the way across the office. <laughs> trying to 
trying to get into its little holes, you know. You yeah. Can't with the trap stop. So it's just banging away at it. What's the temperature, John? 80 today. <clears throat> Very good. I'd like to respond, John, but it wouldn't be appropriate. Yeah, I can just imagine what you're thinking, Mike. <laughs> we have some cold weather down yet. We have had frost. <laughs> 60. <laughs> Well, it's been a cool winter down there. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Overall. Yeah, I can see your hot gluten from here, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I was down there some mornings. It was uh, in the high 30s. Yeah. In the morning. It got up to 60. It doesn't take long. 50, no? 60 degrees. You can ask it. You know, so. Nothing to shovel. Right. <laughs> now you're rubbing it in. <laughs> it's hard to have sympathy. <laughs> If they get a dusting, they'll shut down the state. Yeah. No equipment. No. Okay. No infrastructure built for that. Here, everybody's got a file. Got a way to get a four-wheel drive or something. Yeah. So what? You see that guy that went over the bridge and put stuff there? The tractor oh, trailer. Oh, the tractor trailer. I know. Who? Right over. Right over and into the river. Over the guardrail. And he, he was a uh, hitter. Full-size tractor trailer with mail, uh, mail in it, and the boxes are all floating in the river. <laughs> he and said, the cab went underwater. He yeah. crawled out and he was sitting up on top of the truck waiting for somebody to rescue. Yeah, didn't the cab sink it? Then he was on top of the yeah. trailer. He was lucky. Over. Over. Yeah. And he can't swim. He said he couldn't. He couldn't oh, swim. Oh no, kid, I didn't yeah. see that part. Was, so the, was the river to frost it right now, or is it still got ice on it? It was was water. That, it was water. That area yeah. was. I can't believe how fast the ice went out. I know, huh? Everything's on camera, though. You know, you can't, oh, no matter you can't what do you do, nothing, anyways. I mean, at first, and nobody knew what happened, and they apparently found somebody with a camera. It's warmer and warmer. It's 50 degrees. But this time, came home. Yeah, you got a motorcycle. We're going to have a motorcycle. We're going to have a motorcycle. Oh, right. Off the bridge with your feet. Nothing built up there. Jack, no river up there. It's just another road. Wow. In that case, it doesn't need to fall to get you to see that Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Sure is. How are you doing, John? I'm trying to remind you. I'm going to finish that. Go back up this way. Almost time. Want to go again? Yeah. Almost time. Yeah. Put polyurethane on the stairs from the first floor to the second. Tiles done. Where was it? Check. No, actually, they were the delay. It was a spec. Then, then when they bought it, they have a closing set up for that. And they want to go from one to the other. So I still got another five weeks. Almost done. So. Did we do a closing VSO? <laughs> Maybe. Baby. <laughs> Apologies. No problem. Yeah, Thanks. No problem, um, so, if they are off the snow sideline by 12 feet with the current dimensions of the structure, are you going to give us a building permit? I need to something about that septic system to make sure that the septic's fine. And I, I wouldn't give a building permit unless the board approved. Oh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. If they, they, mm -hmm. I, I'm hearing 12 feet. That's splitting the, splitting it. Mm -hmm. That they would seem like that that's where people were from the board's perspective. Mm -hmm. So if they went that far, and so that assumes they voted for it, obviously. Um, I, I mean, short of having a permit in my hand and, and everything in my hand that I need, I mean, for me to say, am I going to give you a permit? I don't know. I give me the application. Let me see what's in the application. Let me see what's there. I don't just randomly say, yeah, I'll give you a permit. I, I, I can't say so, I'm just going to give you a permit. May, maybe I can help you a little bit. Good. Let's go back to the comments that I made about the septic system. You, you, you know where the septic system is. So that's the guideline. You have to be a minimum. With that, and then if, if for some reason you were less than that, you could go to the Board of Health and they, they could work.
or even if, if they so choose to be considering the structure. I'm just trying to help you so you understand what it is. So if, if in the event that it, you do get a decision that whatever it is, and you're happy with it, then you know what Ken's going to be asking for. He's just going by the building code of what he requires and asks for. And he can't just say he's going to give it to you because he doesn't know these unknowns that are in here. Now you're going to be a drawing. You're 59 feet, four inches, I think, um, on the septic plan. Yeah, he gave you the dimensions. Yeah, so it's 59 feet, four inches. But we don't know if that's to the edge of the tank or to the center of the tank. And I'm just sure. I'm just trying to help you with it, that's all. Um, so that's what you would have to verify. And then And you know it to be ten for sure? I know I know, you know what it is because I have done permits. So uh, I've done projects and I know what the requirement is. Um, the that's just Title Five, that's everywhere in the state, that's not local to this town. The um, Only thing that Ken brought up that you would have to confirm is because it is a leach pit, you don't know where it flows out to. So that even though the tank tank is right here, if the leach area is around it, five feet, ten feet, whatever, typically it's not that big. But if it is, that's what he's looking for to have confirmation. Typically on a leach pit, it's this is a call. In the 70s, they did a lot of this, and I can't attest to what this is, but this is what typically what they they did a lot of. They had a, a, a collar that they put in the ground, a concrete collar, about 12 feet in diameter, that they filled with stone. And it was not, not uh, unknown to them to actually have pipes coming off of that in a leaching run and directions off of that collar for the, for the uh, effluents to leach out of. This could be just a collar. For all I know, this could be a 55-gallon drum with holes in it. I don't know what it is. I think it's square because you can see the grass grows different. Yeah. So I feel like it must yeah. be. Can't it could be. Tell. But, it but feels look, but like, like it's I say, square. It's so like it's oblong, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. grass always grows different there. Right. So I, j I just don't know what's there, and I don't know which direction if this piping coming out of it is going. Mm -hmm. I don't. So for me to say yes, I give you a building. I. Honestly, with this, I couldn't give you a building permit. Okay, I need more definitive plans showing me. So the, when the they did the PAMR thing, um, so that gentleman maybe he has somebody that takes his camera stuff and like put because the plot plan guy couldn't take those dimensions and put it on a plot plan. Mm -hmm. So you think it's the septic guy with the camera that has somebody that can put it on a. Land? What do you think? Your Who's most the person? inexpensive way to do it would be to have somebody come over and pump it and look in the tank and see if there's any pipes sticking out. So well, that leaching, the leaching pit's not going to have a, a pumpable area. Right? Yeah, it should be stone filled or something. Because it's typically stone filled. So they went down that covered. with the camera. Um, I've seen it without covers. I've seen it with a permanent cover just covering the stone. Mm -hmm. You've seen those. I have. Covers. But uh, again, so I, I don't know. I mean, so some exploratory has got to be done to give you an answer as to who can do it. I would probably start off with a licensed septologist. What is that? It's somebody. The septic who, guy. <laughs> <laughs> is that really what a septic guy is called? What they do is they, they go and examine septic systems and septic tanks. For, the Title V people? Huh? Like the Title V people? Yeah. 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 They're licensed so the septologists. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I yeah. thought yeah. you were joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right? Yeah. So, I mean, with this, no, I would not give you a building permit, okay? <laughs> that's If that's the answer you're looking for. So can I ask one other question? Mm -hmm. So, if those dimensions and everything shows to be what you had said, 10 feet, and we bring that to you, and it shows that it's 10 feet from this proposed new location. Is that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Show me the plan of what okay. the system is. But as is. long as it's 10 feet off, that's what we're hoping that it is, yeah. right. basically. Correct. Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Okay. In line, it seems, this is just my feeling, it seems like we're pretty close to where we need to be. Um, in line with the, what the attorney had proposed was to continue this so they can do their homework because if we give and we grant them relief on their special permit 
and they find that it's closer or bigger or there's pipes running all over the place, We're back. it doesn't do them any good. So if we afford them the opportunity to do a little research, you can come back with better information for us, it may be helpful. That's just my suggestion. Does that mean more paper, more advertisement in the paper? No, this hearing would just get continued. There'd be no more advertising. Well, that would be my recommendation, my ask, mm -hmm. my request. Um, and then we can do our homework and, and uh, get something. I just don't want to see the applicant go through the process in, if, in the event that we do grant the relief and they find out that that's a problem. Like I needed 11 feet instead then of. Then they still have a problem because they still have a building that's in the wrong place. I, I understand that, but so that's it's going to weigh it's going to weigh into the decision that's made. Yeah. So um, it's a, it's in something that would clarify a lot of issues mm -hmm. brought up tonight. Mr. Chairman, if I could. Go ahead, John. I'm willing to grant them. Uh, a stay for now meeting. We'll meet again next month and let them investigate what a septic system is without a problem. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is that what you'd like to do? I would. Okay. There's two things we need. We just need a request for a continuance in writing. Yep. And then we need um, you to give us um, an extra 30 days to make a decision. So. But that that would be it. That's fine. So, uh, all right. And can I just understand what that extra thirty? I don't know what that means. Extra thirty days to decision. To issue it, the written decision. Oh, oh. But we, we'd know the decision at the board. At right, like you'll make a decision at the table. I, I will just say I don't want to speak for them. I mean, my observations of, of how they operate. They typically do vote at the. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. The, the, we get ninety at the. Yeah. I understand. I understand, but we've always, yep. if people ask for a continuance, we just get an extra 30. So there's probably not a, hopefully not a need for it, but understood. we're just, that's what, that's the way Abundance of caution. Nope, understood. Yep. yep. Okay. And the email, does that go to Brian or does that go to at confirming the request for the extension or to the continuance? You want, you want the, oh, you want yeah. the email. Should that go to Brian or should You can handwrite it. You can handwrite it. Oh, okay. Okay, and that continuance would be, our next meeting is April 6th at 7 p.m. Does that give you enough time to do what you need to do? It's, you know, you guys know employee shortage. I mean, we were lucky enough, these, these people. Yeah, he come over and dug it up. Yeah, we were lucky. Um, it was, the ground was frozen. I'm at the mercy of whatever you called it, the septic guy. Yep. Um, I, he was super great, he came, I begged him. Um, the plot plan guy was super great, he, he drew an, a, an additional, you know, so they were super great, but at the mercy of the people that are you're requiring me to get the information from. I'll do the best I can and see. Yeah, I'm just trying to help you that way. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I, I don't, you know, quite understand all this stuff, so. So is it clear what we're asking for? Oh yeah, so I, no clear. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, no, we have, trying to help we have no, so. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Clear as mud, clear as mud. We, we I'm, appreciate I'm it. gonna have him explain it to me when we're done. <laughs> we, because there's all these good. different elements, all, all different elements. Is that enough? Do I have to sign it? What, what do I gotta do? Yeah, just put your name on it. Jesus. <laughs> and, and an additional 30 days to render a written decision. Mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Okay. So the applicant's looking for a continuance of 30 days. I guess we, we could, uh, somebody will make a motion to approve make that. A motion to continue. Um,
right here. Um, it's a uh, 2022-01. Um, make a motion to continue 2022-1 until April 6th. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Fitzpatrick to uh, grant the... Okay, thank you, John. Seconded by Mr. Bambara. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we're going to do a roll call because John's uh, participating through Zoom. So, aye, Dan Heaney. Aye, Jim Palmer. Aye, Ron Forger. Fitzpatrick, aye. Aye, Jim Bambara. Great. Okay. So, your continuance is granted. We'll see you next month. Hopefully, we can Thank you. move forward. Appreciate it, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, John. John, did you get a copy of the minutes? Say again? Did you get a copy of the minutes? No. There's a lot of paper. <laughs> Okay. Yep, we'll put it in. Master file. Yep. I want a copy of that. I can go make one. You know, um, sorry, I think we're gonna we'll do with the minutes at the next meeting because I I did get my copy. Yeah, and I I just got them, so I haven't read them. So, all right, uh, we don't have any other agenda items tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Forger to adjourn. We have a second? Second. There is four. <laughs> second by Mr. Palmer. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting's adjourned at 8 17. You want a roll call? Yeah, and we'll do a roll call. Aye, Dan Heaney. Aye, Jim Palmer. Aye, Ron Forger. Fitzpatrick, aye. Jumbo Bar, aye. 